Hey folks, lately I've had a bunch of new students asking the same questions in their first lessons. They say things like, how do I get started improvising? What scales do I have to know? And I've printed out all of these Brian Sutton tabs. Will these help? Sorry, Brian. I love you, but I've heard your arrangement of Big Sciota from like three different students this week. It's a good arrangement. I'm just very tired of it. <laughs> Here's the thing. My last video I did on bluegrass improv exercises, I think was really good. It did really well, but it was really open. I wasn't working with vocal tunes or fiddle tunes specifically. And I guess it was just full of a bunch of like broad stroke concepts, right? There wasn't a lot of like specific practical stuff. So let's see if we can focus in and talk about how you might start improvising today on a basic fiddle tune. There's papers everywhere. By the way, if you want to support me making more videos just like this one that you're watching right now, you should check out my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com. There's a bunch of free stuff on there where you can get a cool t-shirt or you could sign up for some Skype lessons. Other than that, you can always like, comment, and subscribe just right down below. All right, so it's Saturday night. Mom and dad have gone to bed. You've got the house to yourself, so you sneak onto the computer and you go to download Banjo Ben's super advanced arrangement of Red Haired Boy. By the way, this isn't a dig on Banjo Ben. He's he's a really cool dude. I like Ben, we're tight. The thing is you just, you don't wanna download the super advanced versions of tunes if you're gonna be improvising yourself over them. See, normally these arrangements are full of a bunch of fancy licks and other stuff. So what's in the advanced arrangement is like a pre-decorated Christmas tree and a fully furnished apartment. You're not gonna move in and like start decorating because the work's already done. Someone already filled it up. There's no room left for your personal voice. Instead, you probably wanna find the simplest version of the fiddle tune that you can find, an arrangement that has no bells and whistles. So that way you can change whatever you want to be your own way. You can still look at the advanced arrangements for ideas and you can still learn them. They're still great playing exercises. But if you wanna learn how to improvise, well, you can't just play other people's improvisations. So let's find something undecorated and let's try again. All right, so it's Saturday night. Mom and dad have gone to bed. You have the house to yourself. So you sneak onto the computer and you go and you download Banjo Ben's super beginner arrangement of Red Haired Boy. Now, if you wanna start improvising over a tune like this, you, you really have to know it, right? Make sure you really understand the tune. And when I say that you wanna be really familiar with the original melody, you may be thinking, well, all right, Marcel wants me to go play the tune a bunch over and over again. But that's not it, that, that's not quite what I'm saying. You also kind of have to know how fiddle tunes are made and how to listen to them. So let's check out Red Haired Boy and let's see if we can understand how the tune works. You might know some of the obvious stuff, like the A part gets played twice and the first time maybe it has this ending, maybe the second time it has that ending. But there's more to this structure than just that. Like the first two measures of the A part are a strong melodic statement. The next two measures are generally a turnaround that gets us back into the melody again. Look. On the second line, there's there's the melody again. That's the same two measures. And then the last two measures of the A part is an ending, or as I like to call it, a tag. This same kind of outline would also work for A parts of tunes like Salt Creek, or Big Mon, or Bill Cheatham, or Temperance Reel, Blackberry Blossom. But it, it would have to be slightly different for tunes like Big Sciota or Cherokee Shuffle. Marcel, this is the most boring video you've ever made. When does the improvising happen? Well, if you were paying attention and not clicking off onto a more interesting video, you may have noticed that all eight or nine or so fiddle tunes that I just mentioned all have very, very similar tags. They're all two measures long and they land on the open G string on beat three of that second measure. Now that's a pretty cool development for us because if all the tags are the same and all those different tunes, that means if we can learn how to improvise tags, then we can start improvising over 90% of fiddle tunes. Now, since all of those tunes are played out of G shapes, and I know like some of them are capo second fret, so they're technically A, whatever, we don't care because we're guitar players, everything is G to us. All we need is a G major pentatonic scale and a good understanding of the phrase length of a tag. So the G major pentatonic scale is super easy to learn. I've shown it so many times on this channel, but we're gonna do it one more time, right? It's actually so easy, and so many of you have probably seen it. We're gonna add a note to it just right away. So we're gonna add the minor third to it. That note is gonna appear in parentheses in the tab and in the sheet music. Know that that note is not part of the major pentatonic scale. It is a note that we're adding to it. So 
great. Let's talk about phrase length now. Like I said, every tag that we've seen so far is two measures long, and it ends on the open G string on beat three of the second measure. You can visualize or count that in lots of different ways, so I'm going to give you some options. First of all, those measures probably look something like this. The traditional way to count this would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three. If that works for you and you understand that system, great, that's wonderful. If that system doesn't do a lot for you, an alternative is this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G. These numbers are basically counting out groups of eighth notes like you can see in the sheet music. We need three groups of eighth notes and then the G note to end. Now let's improvise some examples. So first of all, you'll probably want to improvise some tags in isolation, right? So now I'm thinking about the counting and the pentatonic scale together at the same time. So uh, counting it in the traditional way, let me make one. Be something like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. That operates as a tag, took up the right time frame, counted the eighth notes correctly. I only used notes in the scale. I had a good time. <laughs> That's generally what you're going to find. Let me do one more half out. Um, this time I'll count it the non traditional way, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G. I'll do one more, and this time I'm not even going to count. There you go, there's three tags all using the same kind of system to get going. You'll notice that I didn't put tab on the screen for those. That's because the tab doesn't matter. I'm just making up examples. You may also notice that these tags aren't very exciting. <laughs> They're not like the coolest tags in the world. You know why? That's because you're just starting out. Stop judging yourself so much and just play music. <laughs> so when all of that's super comfortable, you can put that into practice by improvising them inside of tunes. So let me try to demonstrate that for you. I'm going to improvise some tags for a couple of the fiddle tunes that we mentioned earlier. So for instance, uh, here would be like Red Haired Boy. Here comes my tag. Here would be uh, Salt Creek. Maybe I'll count this one this time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, Big Sandy River. cheated just a hair in that one. Let me point out what I did. I played this fretted B instead of the open B. That's the only thing I did different if you saw my hands do something strange. One more, Big Sciota. Or it could have been. Could have been lots of things, right? These are all tags. They all take up the same amount of time. They're made with similar note sets. I was just going up the neck a little bit just to be silly, but I think you get the idea. Once again, the examples that you'll be creating though are very simple tags. The language is simple, but it's your own. And that's the huge benefit. When you have more vocabulary from licks or the advanced arrangements you might be looking at and practicing, you can manipulate them into more tags. And this can be a really safe playground for you to initially start improvising. Just like I said, right, you can play with the rhythms and the note choice later on to make things more exciting. But maybe right now, stick to the major pentatonic scale with that minor third and just see what kind of different tags you can create and how you can drop them into tunes like Red Haired Boy and Salt Creek and Big Sciota and all the other ones. Anyway, if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, like I said earlier, there are some things you can do, right? You should go to my website. Check out LessonsWithMarcel.com. Like I said, we got the merch. We got a bunch of free tabs. There's some tabs you can buy if you want to help support me. You can sign up for Skype lessons, and there's tons of articles that we write on there, too. 
I swear, it's a great website. I spent too much time on it, so please check it out. Otherwise, it's sitting there for no one. You can also like, comment, subscribe here on YouTube. You're already on YouTube, so, uh, so I'm sure you know the drill. Other people have asked you to do those things. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, mom and dad are out of town, so I'm gonna go download some Banjo Ben tabs. From the mountains cold, we ring them bells at the crossroads. Through the valley below, my heart was running from town. And that midnight train.